All right. We got the recording together. All right. So we got that. Let me see. Okay. All right. It's still not letting me. It's still not letting me. Okay. So we're just going to do it like this because I don't want to rock the boat. I want to I want to just go with it. All right. So um, it, it, we can record this and it's going to go to YouTube later for everybody that wasn't able to come. So thank you all so much. All right. All right. Psalm 118. Uh, we're talking about a steadfast song, a steadfast song. Here's what it says. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Here it is. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love, his steadfast love endures forever. Here's what it says right after this. And I think this is real good. Here it is. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place with the Lord on my side. I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. All right. So, so I want to just stop there. Um, a steadfast song. That's, that's what I want us uh, to, uh, to discuss today. Um, that's what I want us to talk about today. I think this is going to be an important one, something that all of us can glean from something that all of us can learn from uh, a steadfast song. This song is about how God has been steadfast to the writer of this particular song. So with being steadfast, what does it mean to be steadfast? To be steadfast, it means um, that the uh, the word steadfast in, in the original Hebrew is pronounced kahisid. Kahisid. I think that's how you say it. I'm, I'm, I try to write it phonetically in my notes. Uh, I don't know if I quite got it. Kahisid. Kahisid. Uh, that's what I'm trying to work, brush up on my Hebrew. Um, I was challenged this week or last week um, at my pastors and leaders conference uh, that I went to to brush up on my Hebrew so I can pronounce it better uh, as I as I try to share these words with you. But it, but that word steadfast in the original Hebrew is the word kahisid. It and it refers to God's devout, loving, kindness, mercy, and faithfulness at the very core of his character uh, and at the very core of his actions. God is steadfast. Therefore, his love is steadfast, steadfast, his love is unwavering, his, his love is faithful, and his love is kind. So, so, Along with God being steadfast, here is what we receive. I keep on looking at my, my second camera because uh, I'm just used to it. Um, along with being steadfast, here is, here is what um, we get with God being steadfast. Along with being steadfast, here's what we receive. We receive steadfast love, enduring mercy, uh, and eternal compassion. All right. That's what we get from God being steadfast, but the text doesn't stop there, right? The text doesn't stop there because it doesn't just talk about God being steadfast. It informs us that God's character includes steadfast love. Now, this is important. This is important because according to the new international commentary on the Old Testament, it informs us that the Hebrew word for steadfast love is the word he said, he said, that, that's, that's that word. The, the Hebrew word for steadfast love is he said. They share that English words like mercy, loving kindness, steadfast love, faithfulness, uh, covenantial love, or uh, uh, covenantial love, loving faithfulness, and the like fail to express the range and depth of the Hebrew word for steadfast love, which is 
He said, he said that that's what it says. I may not be pronouncing it right, but y'all bear with me. All right. So here's, here's what we understand. They go on to share that he said, which means steadfast love in English is the, is a relational term that describes both the internal character as well as the external actions that are required to maintain a life-sustaining relationship, all right? So while the term is being used of both humans um, and God, in this particular, in this particular book, in the whole book of Psalm, every time you read the word steadfast love, it's a, it, it's above all, it's a, above all, it's a theological term that describes God's essential character as well as God's characteristic ways of acting. All right. This is important. I don't want you to miss this. So, um, but also it doesn't just express God's characteristic ways of acting. It, it, it especially it, it informs us about God's characteristic ways of acting in electing, delivering, sustaining all the people of Israel, God's children, essentially. So, so watch this y'all. He said steadfast love is both who God is and what God does. All right. Don't miss this. It's who God is and it, it's what God does. That builds our framework for our discussion. Steadfast love is mercy. It's kindness. It's faithfulness. It describes who God is and what God does. Because oftentimes, if you were to give yourself an adjective, right? Not everyone that that has the benefit of getting get give getting a, an average adjective about themselves it doesn't always describe what they do. It may describe who they are, but it may not describe who, what they do. So that means if I'm, if I'm an absentee father, which I am not, praise the Lord. If I'm an absentee father, I'm a father, that's who I am, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what I do. Does that make sense? But in this case, in this scenario, God is saying, this is who I am and what I do. I'm steadfast and what I do shows you that I'm steadfast. I am steadfast love. I am enduring love. I am um, a love that, that um, has developed to the point it's strong enough to hold on to you even when you don't hold on to me, right? That's what God is saying he is. So that means He's saying, I'm steadfast love, but also I'm going to show you steadfast love. So here's what I'm saying. It's what it's who God is and it's what God does. All right. So, so I got on, man, I really wish I can get you this, this slide, Lord and mercy. Um, uh, so, so he, here's, here's what I want us to consider. The psalmist gives us reasoning for the conclusion he has reached about God when he says his steadfast love endures forever. That is a conclusion that only experience can give you, right? That is a conclusion that only can be given to those that have tried God before. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So that means... um. You don't know how steadfast God's love can be unless you tested the limits. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So this writer has tested the limits of God's steadfast love, has challenged whether or not God can be steadfast in his love, has challenged the idea that God is steadfast as well as his actions. He's tested it. He or she has tested this, th this notion. And watch this, y'all. They have come to this conclusion about God. And here's how they came to this conclusion. Here's how they came. It says, 
All right. First thing they said, I called on the Lord and he answered. Right. I called on the Lord and he answered. Um, and he set me in a broad place. All right. It goes on to say, here's another reason why I came to this conclusion that God's love is steadfast. Here, here's here's another conclusion that I've, I've arrived at. I don't fear because the Lord is on my side. Right. These are experiential notions. These are notions that only come through life, that only come through life happening to you and life happening in a way that you did not expect. You only get these type of conclusions after you've gone through certain things. Right. Uh, the first thing he said, I called on the Lord and he answered. Right. That shows us he's in communication with the Lord. And when he needed God and called on God, God answered him. So, and, and then secondly, I don't fear because the Lord is on my side. These are experiential notions. Thirdly, he's, he goes on to say, I have victory, victory over everyone who hates me. <laughs> Number four, he says, God caught me when I was falling. Y'all. You don't get this type of understanding. You don't get this type of principle unless you've gone through it. Unless you've fallen to a place and before you fell to the ground, God caught you. All right. And then fifthly, and there's so many more, but here's uh, fifthly, God corrected me, but God didn't give me over to death. Oh my God. That's what this writer is saying in this particular song. That's what this writer is saying in this particular song. He's saying, I called on the Lord and he answered. I don't fear because the Lord is on my side. I have victory over everyone that hates me. God caught me when I was falling. God corrected me, but God didn't give me over to death. You only get these notions through experience. And after these experiences, he's come to the conclusion that God's steadfast love endures forever. Oh my goodness. I love this. Because here's, here, here is the conclusion. I really love this. Here's the conclusion. Yo, somebody put this in the comment section. Make sure that someone gets this if they come in late. Here's the conclusion that they get, that they give without actually saying it. Right. This is what they say without saying, because you got to kind of read between the lines when you look at the text. All right. Here's what they say without saying. Because of God's steadfast loves, steadfast love, I don't have to fight for victory. Because I fight from victory. Oh, my God. Did y'all hear what I just said? That's not mine's originally. I, I got that from a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Daryl Hall. Um, and I don't know who where he got that from. Uh, but 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 here is what I love about this psalm. He's writing all of this thing, all of these things about God's steadfast love and how he knows God's love is steadfast. And what he's really saying is because of God's steadfast love, I don't have to fight for victory because I fight from victory. That's the notion that I want you to, uh, to gather for your own lives. You don't fight for victory. You fight from victory. That, that's your starting point. When you wake up in the morning, your starting point is victory. When you first walk into the door of your job, your starting point is victory. When you go lay down and you're trying to figure out what's happening, your starting point is is victory at the beginning of the problem that you may have it's victory i keep on looking up all right so I'm, I'm trying to get better your starting point is victory are y'all hearing what i'm saying all right so so because of his love here's what the psalmist is saying i fight from victory i don't fight for victory all right so so um because because y'all, despite our inconsistencies in life, God's love is still steadfast, all right? Because of our inconsistencies, I believe our inconsistencies have the ability to highlight God's um, consistency in our life, right? When you're dealing with a range of emotions 
and you're dealing with this. And right after you complete this, you got that. And right after you fix this, you got that. And right after this happens, th th something else happens, right? In other words, if it's not one thing or another, and through all of these issues about life, you go through a range of emotion, a range of emotions. Sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're sad. Sometimes you're frustrated. Sometimes you go through this because here's what this 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 should um, signify to you: God's love has enough endurance to last through your anguish, through your uh, through your anger, and through your arrogance. All right, this is important. This is why we recognize how God's love is steadfast. This is how we identify God's steadfast love in our life. Because, y'all, he still loves us through our anguish, that's pain, through our anger, that's our response to pain, and through our arrogance, that's your response to prosperity. All right? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I hope y'all ain't missing this. Man, this would have been good to have on a slide. Oh, my goodness. I really wish my, my computer wasn't acting funny. I, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep on saying it. Uh, because I'm really I'm really upset because it was gonna be a nice slide. I promise it was. All right, so so his love endures through all of that. His love endures through all of that. His love endures through our anguish, anger, and arrogance. So many more, but those are the things that I really want us to highlight today. Because y'all, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, God's faithfulness can outlast all of the range, all of the, uh, all of those range of emotions and reactions. Here's what I really enjoy about this: the enduring aspect of God's love. God's love is strong enough to handle all of your issues. God's love is strong enough to handle all of your mistakes. That's why it endures. My, there is a limit to my love. There is also a limit to your love. But God's love endures. Are you hearing me? God's love says, yeah, you messed up. Yeah, you're going to have to suffer some consequences. But while you go through these consequences, I'm going to love you. After you come out of these consequences, I'm going to love you. When you mess up again, because it's inevitable, I'm going to love you. And when you get it right, I'm going to show you how much I love you. It, his love endures. Here's what that means. His love is steadfast. It's strong enough to stand amongst storms. It's strong enough to stand the storms of life and the range of emotions that we all have. You getting upset with God and, and, and falling away from God and messing up while you're still with God and doing certain things, mistake, making the same mistakes over and over again, his love is strong enough to handle it. His love, y'all, is so strong to handle your, your, your mess ups, your mistakes, your anger, your anguish, and your arrogance. Here's how we know. You're still here today. You still have another chance to make it. You still have another opportunity to pull things together. This is how you know his love is steadfast. This is how you know his love is steadfast. So um, God's steadfast love should, should encourage us. Here it is. I love this. God's steadfast love should encourage us to develop a consistent response to your obligations, expectations, and frustrations. I'm going to say that one more time. The strength, the consistency of God's love, the steadfastness of God's love should encourage us to develop a consistent response to your obligations, to your expectations, and your frustrations. You're obligated to do certain things. As an adult, you are obligated. Even children, you're obligated to go to school. Adults, you're obligated to go uh, to go to work in order for you to make money, in order for you to provide for yourself and your and for your family. You are obligated to do all of these things. And rather than having this range of emotions, 
every single day or every single Monday. Oh, I'm so sick of this job. I'm so sick of this husband. I'm so sick of this wife. I'm so sick of these children. Main, try to main, maintain a steadfast response to your obligations, expectations, and frustrations. When your expectations are not met, when you're saying, you know, I expected things to happen this way and by this time I would have this, 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 and the, and the, and the other, instead of getting so frustrated, instead of being so angry um, at the reality that your timeline wasn't on the same timeline as God's, try to have a steadfast response. Because y'all, we know despite our plans not working out the way that we desire them to, God's love is still there. Just because it didn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It's still there because his love is steadfast. It's strong enough to stay in there even when things are happening. Storms are happening. It's strong enough to be uh, to endure. So, so not only that, y'all, try to have a a um I'm trying to encourage you to have a consistent or steadfast uh steadfast reaction to your obligations, expectations, and frustrations. Many of us panic too easily. Many of us go, like you send yourself topsy-turvy when certain things don't go the way or when you're overwhelmed or when you don't get what you thought you were going to get and, and you were working, to, you, you know, and listen, I've been there too. When you have all these things that are at work in your life, many of us panic we, we, we let go. We, 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 we drop, we say, you know what? That's it. I'm done with it. I'm, I'm giving up. That's it. Right. There is a time where you can say, I need to move on. But sometimes we give up so easy when it's not, when our life doesn't go according to our plan. But I got a secret to tell you. Don't be offended when I say this. Your life don't belong to you. <laughs> your plans aren't better than God's plans for you. Um, uh, Priscilla Shira, at the end of her prayers, I heard someone uh, share this, but I've also heard her say this before. Um, uh, Dr. Howard John Wesley, I was listening to him uh, at the conference and that I went to last week. And uh, y'all, I got so many good things that I'm, that I'm able to share with you. That's why I'm so excited um, right now. Here's, here's what he shared at the conference. He said, at the end of all of her prayers, here's what she says. God, um, what, how she said, how she said, um, do this, do, do what I prayed for or something better. That, that's what she said. That's what she said. So that means y'all, that means you open yourself up to God's plan in your life. Don't be so rigid when your life doesn't fall in line with your own plans for your life. When your expectations for your own life are not met. Now, there are certain things that are under your control. You can have ex expectations for your excellence and, and what you bring to the table. You can have those type of expectations, but there are some things only God can handle that only God can do. So we should develop a response, a steadfast um, response to our obligations, to our expectations and our frustrations. All right. So here it is to, to get the same conclusion that this psalmist gets to, which is God's steadfast love endures forever. Here's what we need to do. Here's what we need to do. All right. Here's how we get to the same conclusion this writer got to. All right. Y'all ready? Find and or remember our incentive. 
right? Here, here it is. Here it is. This is really my, 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 my last point today. And we're done. Here it is. Find or remember our incentive. All right. Remember, this psalmist says God's steadfast love endures forever. This psalmist gives all the reasons for the conclusion that they have arrived to, which has simultaneously given the psalmist a reason or incentive to rejoice or be thankful and be aware of their own inconsistencies, which highlights God's steadfast love. Too fast. I'm going to go back and say it again. All right. All right. This psalmist gives all the reasons for the conclusion they have arrived to, which is God's love, God's steadfast love endures forever. When they arrive to that conclusion, that has simultaneously given the psalmist a reason, an incentive to rejoice, be thankful, and aware of their own inconsistencies, which also highlight God's steadfast love. All right. I love, I love that. I love that because when he looks over his life and all the ways God's salvation has been present in his life, the psalmist writes his steadfast love endures forever. That's praise. That's rejoicing. But all the reasons he has from getting to... Uh, that all the reasons he has to get to this conclusion, which is God's steadfast love endures forever, are the incentives, right? They are the reasons he's gotten to this conclusion. So, so here's what that means. Here's what that means. The authors of our book, uh, Psalms for Black Lives, here's what they say. Here's what they say. I love this. Each day emerges from God's handiwork. Each day contains reasons and incentives for joy, gratitude, and celebration, all right? So when the writer says his steadfast love endures forever, he got there, but here's how he got there. Uh, here, Here's how he got there. I'm, I'm gonna go to it. I called on the board and he answered. His steadfast love endures forever. That That's how he got, th this is, when he says, I called on the Lord and he answered. That's the reason he arrived at the conclusion that his steadfast love endures forever. I hope y'all are getting this. Is this too technical? This makes sense in my mind. I hope it makes sense in y'all mind. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Here's how he got to his steadfast love endures forever. I don't fear because the Lord is always on my side. This is the vehicle that got me to the, the, the gratitude and the thankfulness that all of us need to arrive at. <clears throat> all right. Um, here's here's another vehicle that he used to get to this conclusion. Here's the, here's another vehicle. I have the victory over everyone that hates me. God caught me when I was falling. God corrected me. This is a big one. God corrected me, but God didn't give me over to death. Are you? Am I the only one that's 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 hearing what I'm saying? This is how he got to the conclusion of his steadfast love endures forever. Oh my goodness. This is so good to me. This is so good to me. So, so here is, here is what we need to understand. Each day we should consider our incentives for thankfulness and gratitude and celebration. All right. You consider you should consider all of these vehicles that you have. You have vehicles to get you to the conclusion that God's love is steadfast. Here's here's a vehicle. Here's a vehicle that can get you to uh, the conclusion of God's love is steadfast. He gave you another chance. That is for some of us. That's all the conclusion we needed or that that's that's all the reason we need to to be grateful and show gratitude and love and understanding. That is that is something that all of us have experienced. He's given us another chance. That should be able to drive all of us to the same exact conclusion 
that despite all of your issues, despite all of your mistakes, despite everything that you've done, despite where you've been and who you've done things with and, and, and how you've made mistakes over and over again, he keeps on loving you. He keeps on giving you another chance. He keeps on telling you, come back home. He keeps on doing, doing all, everything for you. And the conclusion you should arrive to is that his steadfast love endures forever. That is, y'all, you've been given these incentives. And so here it is. You need to identify these incentives every single day to keep you from, from, from having an inconsistent response to your obligations, expectations, and frustrations every single day. You need to locate and identify your incentives to the, your incentive to get to the conclusion of his steadfast love endures forever. Oh man, I, I hope this ain't over y'all's heads. I hope y'all are getting this. All right. So here, here is the big incentive. Here's a big incentive. Because of God, because of the God you serve and the salvation we have acquired through Jesus, you are not fighting for victory. You are fighting from victory. That That's a, that's a vehicle, y'all. That's the vehicle that all of us can utilize. That's the incentive that all of us can find every single day in order to give us a consistent response to our obligations, expectations, and frustrations. Here's the incentives. When you start your day, you're not, you're not starting, you're not, you're not striving for victory. You are striving from victory. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. All right. So um, here it is. I'm almost done. Finding or remembering this incentives, this incentive allows us to be a better steward of our joy, our happiness, our frustrations, and our indignations, all right? Understand, we need to allocate our frustrations and indignations sparingly. Not every situation deserves you to be frustrated at it. Here's why you have survived every single one of your past frustrations. You survived it. What that means is trouble won't last always. Stop going in to new frustrations with brand new mindsets as if you don't have enough memory to recognize the past times where you were frustrated, but it still worked out in your favor. I hope y'all are getting this. Here's, here's what I'm trying to say. Here's what I'm trying to say. We should go into new frustrations with the memory of an elephant and not of a goldfish. Goldfish have really short memories. So, you you go and and flick the 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 uh the fish tank and they get all scared and then the goldfish comes right back because they just forgot what just happened but an elephant you do something wrong to an elephant if you want to i don't know if this is true i've never had an experience with an elephant but here's what i do know what i've heard they have a long term memory which means y'all they don't go into new situations with brand new mindsets. They don't go into brand new situations as if there was no recollection of what just happened prior. Here's what we have to do. Here's what we have to do. I hope y'all are getting this. Man, this is so good to me. This is so good to me. I hope y'all are getting this. Here's what we have to do. Go into your the, the things that would cause you frustrations with a steadfast mindset saying, you know what? 
because of the steadfast love of God, I know if God got me through that, he'll also bring me through this. So I'm not going to go into to this new work week or this new uh this new job or this uh this new situation with this with this old boss as if I'm not going to expect God to come through for me just like he did last time. I'm going into new situations fully expecting that the God of my yesterday is still the God of my today and tomorrow. I, I fully expect that if God brought me through that yesterday, God's going to bring me through this frustration today. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So here's, here is why finding or remembering your incentive to be thankful is important. You now have, here's why, you now have access to the outlook of the psalmist. Every day, you now have access to say for yourself the same words the psalmist says uh, says in this particular psalm. Here's what they say in verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. When you know you start from victory and not and, and you're not striving for your, when you know you starting, when, when you know you're fighting from victory and not fighting for victory, you have the ability to say, no matter how bad the outlook is or the day is that you are coming, coming into, you still have the ability to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is what the psalmist writes in this particular song. 118, the psalmist writes, writes these because they've arrived at the conclusion that God's love is steadfast. It's forever. It's enduring. It, it is strong enough to handle your quirky ways and your foolish ways. It's strong enough to handle all of these things. And because it's strong enough, I have the ability to say, this is the day. Because I know that God is going, his love is, is, is going to endure no matter what. I have the ability to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all, that's a that's a that's a call to worship that we usually share in church, but it's not just a call to worship. It is an indication that you believe. That no matter what comes today, no matter who's there and what's there waiting for me on the road, on the highway, at my job, when I come back home, no matter what's there, God's love has been there, is, is there as well. God's love has been there. God's joy has been there. God's enduring love has been there and it's going to continue to be there. So now I can say this is the day, no matter what's coming, no matter what's going to be in this day, no matter if I got a meeting that I'm dreading, I can still say this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope this was a blessing to you. Uh, we're getting ready to leave from this place, never from God's presence. Let me know in the comments section if this was a blessing to you. I, I, I think this really, really helped me. Um, I hope it helped you. Uh, these things have to minister to me in order for me to be excited about them. And uh, this is something that I was really, really, uh, I was, I was uh, uh, working on this last week while I was at the conference because I just, I was motivated to do so. When you're around all these preachers and all of these uh, people that are, you know, mega church pastors, extremely successful in pastoring and leadership, you just kind of get motivated. And so I, I got motivated, started on this last week, and um, my my excitement uh, bled over in, in uh, into today. And so uh, I'm so thankful and grateful that I was able to go there because this has really, really been a blessing. And y'all, ooh, I, can I share this? I met 
the author of this particular book at the conference that I was just at, uh, Gabby Wilkes. Uh, we are we are in discussions. I would love to bring her on virtually so that we can discuss uh, this book and where it came from and and you know, the inspiration behind it and how long it took her and if this was emotionally exhausting uh, to write this book and how personal some of the uh, some of the reflections these were and how she was able to navigate her and her husband wrote this. And so um, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, uh, scheduling the time for What's the Word Wednesday to have her on uh, with us uh, to discuss uh, this particular book. I want to do that once we get done. So it looks like we may, I don't know when we'll be done, but I think we'll have, I think at least about, I would say a couple months. This may last us uh, the rest of the summer. Uh, so we're getting ready to do that. So um, thank God for that. I took a picture with her. I wish I could show you. I wish I can show you uh, the picture, but um, as you know, my computer's acting funny uh, today. And uh, I just don't know what's happening, but God is good. Anyway, I pray this was a blessing to you. All the ways to give are going to be right there in that comment section. Lady Kennedy is going to post that we can give through Givelify, but you can also give through cash app. I'm asking that you do that. Even now, I appreciate you so very much. Those of you that aren't in the city of Atlanta and may not be a member, we're asking that you sow into this word, sow into what it, uh, what it is that God is doing here at uh, Mount Zion second Baptist. We're asking that you do that. Even now, we really, really appreciate you uh, because y'all, I work hard on getting these words uh, to you and it's not easy doing this every single week. Sometimes I, I I stay up late and get these things done or I wake up very early or I, you know, you know, I do a whole lot of stuff to try to get these words to you. And so I want you to invest in uh, what it is that God is doing, just like I'm investing my time, my treasure and my talent in providing you a fresh and meaningful word that can be helpful to your life. And so please make sure that you do that even now. Cash app or Givelify, you can do either one, whatever works best for you. Thank y'all so very much. Uh, we're getting ready to pray and then close out. Thank you so very much. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, those that are on conference call and then those that are uh, with us us through Zoom. Thank you so very much. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Uh, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your steadfast love. God, we thank you because we have incentives to giving you praise and rejoicing and being grateful and showing gratitude when we look over our life and how you've come through every single day and every single time we've needed you. God, when we've called on you, you've answered. Um, we don't have to fear because you're on our side. We, we have the victory over our enemies and those that would try to despitefully use us and hurt us. God, we thank you for catching us when we were falling. And God, we even thank you for correcting us, but also not giving us over to death because of our mistakes. God, you keep on coming through over and over again. These are the reasons why we've arrived to the conclusion of your steadfast love endures forever. So God, as we've arrived to this conclusion, we have the ability um, to fight from victory and not for victory. God, we thank you because we can share the call to worship in our own lives this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Here's why. Because your love endures forever. We thank you. We love you. We honor you for who you are and what it is that you've done. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And amen. Love y'all. Thank y'all so very much. I appreciate you. Hopefully this is going to be better next week. Uh, Technology wise. I can't wait to see y'all next week uh, or Sunday. Thank y'all so very much. Love y'all. Peace.